Hello, everybody. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I take a look at my life and realize there's nothing left. Anybody? Anybody? Can you finish the song? <laughs> that was probably terrible. They probably already turned it off. They're like, bye bye. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have some kids. For those of you who have ever left with us. We have some kids that are fabulous singers. There is a random dog running around outside. Mm -hmm. That was very distracting. Focus, focus. We'll save him later. All right. Anybody want a new puppy? <laughs> um, I don't know. We might have to go back and cut that out if it just sounded terrible. Did it sound terrible? <laughs> it was sound terrible. Your My rap? song? <laughs> no, it was great. It so, was entertaining. Today in Mindset, continuing on <laughs> with the reality that we're living in right now, which is just kind of terrible, um, we wanted to talk about something that we heard in a sermon that just has resonated with us and what we keep in the back of our minds from family life to business life we can do hard things the, the dawnless life. life hi guys it's mindset monday because mindset matters <sighs> Brennan. is that in the bible the verse that says Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, it continues on. Mm -hmm. But the valley of the shadow of death is basically just really can represent an emotional state where we just feel our world crumbling around us. And we just feel like we're knocking on like the shadow of death is lingering, maybe yeah. not for us, but just it can be like it's just following. It's just there, right? And hovering over us. And honestly, that's a little bit how we felt this week. If you are wondering what we're talking about, go back and watch the other videos. We don't need to go into that, but the point that this pastor that we listened to made is that it doesn't say yea though i lay down in the valley of the shadow of death it says yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death and so the idea is that you have to hold in your mind that this is a season and you need to not choose to camp and park in the season you need to choose to traverse it walk it hike that thing until you're on the other side right you do not need to allow this to become your permanent truth you don't need to allow it to just plant you in the valley of the shadow of death even when you're weak even when you can only take one step a day you need to take that step yeah yeah because <clears throat> otherwise that valley will swallow you alive and in the in the the psalm psalm 23 that this comes from at the end of the psalm it talks about where they the person lays down in green pastures mm -hmm. right so that's that's where you lay down you wait till you get to the green pasture where there's you know safety and there's uh provision and there's like comfort cool grass that's right next next to the river next the to the stream, stream a babbling brook that's right um, but we all know it's, there are days where it's so difficult weeks, to, months, yeah, whatever could be a year, depending on what you're dealing Your with situation, but, but pick something that you're going to move on today or even just this moment in this moment, I'm going to do, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go check something off the list, even if it's just a small thing. We're a society that numbs. Yeah. That's our coping mechanism is to just numb and do whatever we can to not feel. Right. And it's really easy when you've got this device in your pocket yeah. that you, you can just, just check out 
podcast, whatever it is, you just Netflix avoid. Yeah. Right. It's so easy for that to be the answer because it feels more comfortable in the moment. And I, I honestly don't think it's always bad to step outside of your emotions and, you know, read that book, watch that show, whatever it is. I don't think it's always healthy to just sit in your emotions in a deep way. But when your entire life is avoidance, I was, I was trying to explain this to our son, Isaac today, who, you know, is the one who is most affected most by. like our child who's most affected by the circumstances because it was a kid on his soccer team. And, um, he does have some kind of PTSD esque symptoms right now. You know, he is checking out just, um, blanking out things like that but he was also not really verbalizing a whole lot, which his natural bent would be to not be as much of a talker when it comes to his emotions. He kind of is very similar personality in a lot of ways to his daddy. Who's just, you know, he's our more easygoing guy and he doesn't want to make a fuss and he doesn't, you know, talk emotions. But I was trying to explain to him today that it's kind of like food poisoning. When our bodies have food poisoning, then the way that they respond and they react is to get it out, get the poison out, right? So a lot of times it can be volatile and violent and it's coming out both ends and your body is just exploding everywhere and it's miserable. Not a single person that I have ever met or I think will ever meet I don't think enjoys the process of vomiting. It is uncomfortable. It's vulnerable. It's just feels out of control. Yeah. It just feels really gross. Like I I don't know anyone who enjoys the process of vomiting, but that process of vomiting that's uncomfortable and gross is what is going to get your body to that point of healing. Well, that's same concept is true for dealing with our emotions and talking about it. When we stuff, when we watch our shows or, you know, always have a podcast in our ear or a game on or a book or whatever do when we do anything in our power to never have to really think about our emotions or talk about our emotions we are basically walking around with emotional food poisoning that we are not allowing to our, ourselves to heal we're not getting out and so it's really important that while it may be uncomfortable some people are more comfortable with it than others but for a lot of people it's very uncomfortable to talk about to like go through the process of kind of emotionally purging what's going on inside talk about your fears talk about your struggles whatever it is that you're dealing with then you're not going to get to the other side. And while you may learn how to quote function in life, you're, you're going to learn how to function with emotional food poisoning instead of allowing your emotional health in your spirit to heal. And so I guess really the mindset that we have around navigating traumatic events or challenging situations is number one, know that this is not your permanent situation, that you are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Keep taking steps towards walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And those steps include talking to people and emotionally processing what has happened to you so that you can get it out 
and begin to heal kind of like you would with food poisoning. Yep. She's telling the truth, y'all. Yeah. Counselor, you know, sometimes a really solid friend can be that person too. But the main thing is that you should not be holding it in and just bearing that weight on your own and trying to pretend like it doesn't exist. So keep moving, Mm -hmm. find help, Mm -hmm. talk about it. And, uh, while it sucks to purge out those emotional, um, feelings or fears, it, you will feel better after doing so. Just like saying, if you have food poisoning, you do ultimately will feel better mm-hmm. once it's out of your body. Same thing with your emotions. And know that you're not alone. Yeah. You know, maybe no one is dealing with the exact same circumstance that you're dealing with, but people are dealing with stuff. Right. Everybody's been hurt. We all got something. Levels. Yeah. We all got something. And if we don't have something, we're lying. Yeah. All right. Well, be blessed, everyone, and we will see you next Monday. Sounds good. If you like our Dauntless Vibe, then go ahead and like and subscribe. (laughs)